all the four and bring the balance. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, Ms. Rusa. I have been prompted to add here as we are talking of knowledge. It's my favorite uh, dialogue. Knowledge is power and wisdom is superpower. Yes. Knowledge teaches. Uh, what was that? That uh, tomato is a fruit. But uh, wisdom teaches that tom uh, uh, tomato is a vegetable. But wisdom teaches, not knowledge. Just a minute. Knowledge teaches that tomato is a vegetable. No. What does it teach? Yeah, tomato is a uh, fruit. But wisdom teaches that tomato cannot be used in fruit salad. <laughs> so yes. you will also have to keep take care of that point number one. Point number two, just a point. I just wanted to add here. He, Mr. Malik, made a very good point on technology and how technology should be simple used and all those things. I have one more example for that. I remember uh, some time back I read it somewhere that uh, NASA, NASA Space Center wanted to uh, invent a writing device which can be used in the space. They wanted a writing device which can be used in the space, a pen which can be used in the space because you know normal in the space there is anti-gravity so you cannot use a pen. So they spent crores of rupees or millions of rupees and I am sure some Indian would had given them an idea that use a pencil. <laughs> So, I mean, as you are all to technology, I would also like you to uh, look into that. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. These are the questions from the students who are present here. Um, as modern technology is rapidly changing the nature of, nature of knowledge production, it is becoming increasingly important in the field of educational development to examine whether as a result these changes are fostering inclusions or creating greater disparity. This is by the students. Uh, From the audience. Specific? I'd like to, I mean, uh, the, the thing which was not added here, I would like to throw some light on it. You know the social economic disparity, the major reason is, you know there's a case study behind it, research pieces behind it and the basic thing which came up was, though we say India is, uh, India economy is uh, increasing and things like that. You know uh, why India economy is increasing? The reason being that uh, there are, we have a pool of scientists, doctors, engineers and we, we do a lot of knowledge work and this knowledge work, thanks to technology, a lot of this is outsourced like if you call up BPO, KPO, medic, MTs and things like that. Now on the flip side, you know, at the rural level, unfortunately, there are very few education, even not even primary schools, or very few of them. And on this rural level, what happens that when the farmer's sons or daughters, for any way, social reasons or whatever reasons, they are, uh, uh, for whatever reasons they come and study, but they just study still high school. Then what happens that after... This man losing his identity because of technology gradient. Sir, <laughs> one second, please, sir. <laughs> I'll go second so that uh, you get a chance and not only that, I can assimilate my thought. The question was for a man. No, it is said human beings, human beings, human beings. I believe in equality. <laughs> Thank you. And I will finish it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, I, uh, I call technology as antisocial. The reason being, K, I mean, if I talk, not, not talk, I mean, specifically of internet technology, as we all know that now, thanks to email or thanks to, uh, it, it's good also, but other way like this uh, networking sites, maybe we are not, uh, maybe I don't know what my brother is doing at the, in the next uh, room, but I would be knowing what my friend currently in USA is doing, brushing his teeth or whatever. You know, normally you update your status uh, like that. So I would rather call it antisocial. But as I said, okay, it's the same example of knife, it has pros and cons. So tech, uh, what was the technology? Is man losing his identity because of technology? No, 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 <laughs> no. See, I, I also made a statement before that even if you talk, talk of robots, still robots would be robots and human beings would be human because it's the human beings who would be creating them. So technology no way can lose its identity because of, uh, what do you call, uh, it, it, can, it, it, it would not do that, in short answering emails. To be very honest, I'm, I would look at it the other way around. Today I'm happy, I mean, maybe that would have been chances that I would not have come here because I had some commitments but or something to do. But thanks to this mobile and all that, today I can even support whatever thing I wanted to do and I'm be here. So in fact, I would rather say the other way around that thanks to technology, I can do a lot of multitasking. And uh, I enjoy doing multitasking and I mean, uh, ultimately, the, I mean, so this is what I personally believe. So I don't take it as a tension. 
What are we trying to prove? <laughs> My question is, what are we trying to prove out here? <laughs> Pro prove the reality. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Prove the reality. Thank you very much. Can I have a final say? Just because <laughs> I always like to say this, especially the technological... Sir, your permission, can she have a final say? Oh, I mean, of course. Of course. <laughs> See, I always, I mean, thanks for hearing us all out. And you know, the, uh, nor normally in such type of gatherings and with technological people around, I always like to say one thing that... Um, <coughs> We all believe in uh, simple, uh, simple living and high thinking. I mean, but currently what I have noticed is, as he rightly said, we are pretty much into complex living and confused thinking. Especially with students, I have noticed that. So I just want to give one more small example, which is very important, because when we get confused or when we do complex things, we never get successful in life. And at this time, is the point of career which you are in. You are going to start your career. This is very much required. And I'll just like to give an example what I want to say. I'll, I'll always like to give examples while saying this is what I have been taught in my I mean, career that give examples so that people can relate to it. And a simple example is that once upon a long, I mean, uh, everybody has heard of Sherlock Holmes? Have you heard of Dr. Watson? Okay, Dr. Watson was a PhD. While Sherlock Holmes wasn't, everybody knows that? Great. Now one fine day Sherlock Holmes was sitting and uh, sleeping and he woke up at around 2.30 2 in the night. Sherlock Holmes woke up Dr. Watson and said, hey, look, look, what are you seeing uh, and, uh, up there? So Dr. Watson said, oh, so many planets, so many stars and billions of planets and billions of galaxies and things like that. And so uh, astronomically, it is such a uh, this thing, astronomically this thing. So again, uh, Sherlock Holmes asked, still tell me what else are you seeing so he says that oh such a vast universe God has made so many stars and this is the best thing God is a great and theologically this is the best great again the Sherlock Holmes asks still what are you seeing he says that meteorologically I mean it's going to be a fine weather tomorrow clear sky so and finally again what Sherlock Holmes wanted to ask him but then Dr. Watson cut him short and asked him that okay you tell me what are you seeing so Dr. Watson replied that our tent is stolen. <laughs> so what I want to say, please Madam keep things simple. No confused thinking. Thank you. Madam, Thank one, you. One, one minute. What she said about the women and men, I would like to share a fact. I had two companies in Baroda. Two companies. One is Procon, another is Prism. Both are IT companies. Procon was all women.